Everyone got it? Okay. So I want to really um, um, say that we're going to focus a lot about WOLF at NCI and not just WOLF in general. Um, and I'm going to focus on what is a bit different at NCI from uh, what you can see online, because I think that's what you need. <clears throat> um, but for the first thing, what is WOLF? Um, WOLF is the weather research forecast model. Uh, so it was uh, originally developed for weather forecasting, and then now it is more and more used for regional climate. Uh, and what is, uh, is mainly used for is for regional simulation, so uh, not uh, global simulations. And you can also do a lot of different idealized simulations. But in this presentation, we're going to focus on real simulations because they are the more complex to set up. Um, and idealized simulations, the setup is usually a bit simpler, but follows the same kind of principles. And I, it's also each idealized simulation might have a bit different uh, requirements, so we can't follow go through all of them. So um, why is the setup a bit difficult with WOLF? Because it's a regional model, so users have to create their own grid, their own initial conditions, and their own boundary conditions. And that's what is make it maybe more difficult from other models where you can have configurations that are shared. Um, obviously, you can also decide to share a grid and initial conditions and boundary conditions, but um, around the center, there are a lot of different grids and domains that are used. So WOLF comes with a preprocessor program called WPS, which uh, intent is to simplify the steps in creating the grid initial conditions and boundary conditions. Okay, so first thing to do is to understand what I call the WOLF ecosystem. Um, is typically what you would need to create to do your simulation and how you get it. And I find that the best way to understand this is to go from the end and, and follow uh, back to the start of what you need to do, uh, because then you understand why you need to do it. So at the end, you have wolf that, that exists, that the, uh, that the wolf model executable. That's what you need to run to um, create your simulation. And this executable needs two types of inputs. Um, it needs a name list, that input, which gets typically, you know, the timing configuration when you want your simulation to run from what date to what date and the time step size, uh, which physics schemes and dynamic schemes you want to use, whether you want to do some data simulation, or handling, and stuff like that. So um, you see it's a red box. That means it's a text file, and it's edited by the user for a simulation. So that's for you to put the info there that you need. Uh, but as I said, you also need initial conditions, boundary conditions. And everything needs to be on exactly the same grid and projection as the WOLF simulation. And those files are not CDF files, and um, they are created by for you. Um, and they're named always WOLF BDY dot D something, WOLF input dot D something, and dot D01 and WOLF low imp dot D something. If you do data simulation, there's also WOLF FDDA um, dot D. And as you can see, there is no date or anything in the file name. So, um, and you can't add a date. So if you need several, um, if you need several files for your boundary conditions, you need uh, to ma manually put it in your script to handle a uh, changing file because uh, WOLF won't do that for you. Anyway, so so these are necessary and harder to create, uh, but are. Uh, um, that's what will help you to create. Okay, so this is a summary. You have name list and binary files. So to create the binary files, you have 
a file, uh, another executable called real.exe, which takes as input the same namelist .input files and wolf.exe. And what it does is that it will vertically interpolate um, meteorological and geographical fields that you give it uh, as input. So it needs another net, other netcdf files, which have all the data you want on the same domain as WOLF, but not necessarily the same vertical levels. So we will do the vertical interpolation. So how do you get these METM files? So it's again, you need, that's where you need WPS. So METM is the last output from WPS. And it's created with the MedGrid.exe file. Okay, so MedGrid, what does it do? So first it needs a nameless file, which is different from the nameless for WOLF.exe. But both files need some sum info and grid info, and um, these need to be coherent between the two nameless files, and WOLF does not help you to make it coherent. It's for you to make sure that you have the same in there. Um, obviously, WOLF will crash if they're not coherent, but um, just to let you know, you have to check that what you put in both files um, is fine together. In addition to the name list, it needs geographical data. What I call geographical data is like a landmark, a topography. Um, it's typically things that don't change, you know, uh, the land, land surface types, um, things like that. So, uh, and it needs a grid specifications, obviously. So all these are things that are, um, so the geographical data usually are always the same, um, more or less. And the good specifications are uh, what you give them. And it also needs a meteorological data for creating the boundary conditions, um, which come from whatever source you want. Uh, and we'll go through that afterwards. Uh, so, yeah. So how do you get both the geographical data and the meteorological data? Um, okay, the meteorological data, WPS only has um, helpers for data that is initially in grid format. Uh, this is because it was first done for weather forecasts, which use a lot of grid format files. Um, we at the center, I know, use a lot the ERA interim uh, data set to um, force WOLF. And that's one of the reasons why we keep the grip the era interim data in grip format as well as NetEDF, so mm -hmm. that it's already in grip. You don't need to worry about using NetEDF and transforming it in whatever. You just input the grip file, and and then Wolf does the work for you. For the geo um, geographic data, as I said, it's usually always the same source. Wolf provides geographical data that is. Um, set up for WOLF. When I say it is the same source, they provide different resolutions, um, special resolutions, for example, and different sources of data. So it's not always the same data, but usually people just use what's there and don't go look for anything else. Um, okay, so that's it. The, typically, you start from your geographical data, your meteorological data, and you follow all the steps there, and then you end up with this WOF simulation. Um, so if you follow, there is six uh, yellow boxes, so that's six executables, or the one is a shell file, but yeah, so there's quite a lot of different steps to go through to get there. Any questions so far? No? Yes. So uh, if if I, I'm completely new to this, so if we are going to do that, uh, does these steps actually come uh, in order? Like we have to choose these stages, or like when, if I if I'm trying to do that, um, like there's a lot of steps, right? All these yellow yeah. boxes. 
So how do I go in order? Like say if I forget and if I skip one, then I probably don't end up right in the Yeah. Yeah. So so yes. I'm I'm going to go through that. Um, okay. Typically, depending on what you want to use for meteorological data, you can either have some help or not at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's typically the it's short answer, okay. but we'll go through more details um, okay. to see how to do it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so what I want also to say is that um, it's if you if your input meteorological data is not in grid format, it is possible to get the the data in the right intermediate what's called intermediate format format grid. Um, but then you have to there is information how to do that available. We'll we'll have a look. Uh, but th that means there is more work. There's nothing already there necessarily mm -hmm. that exists to help you do it. So um, yeah. That's a bit more complicated, but um, if you have, if you ever have to do that, uh, you can ask CMS to, for some information or um, yeah, help. Okay. Yeah. So what I was saying, um, there is some information that is redundant between namelist that WPS and namelist that input, and it is your responsibility to ensure the information is coherent between two. The, both of them. Um, it's not a lot of information, but still um, sometimes happens to forget to change one when you change the other. Um, so, and Wolf will crash very quickly if you don't give the same information most of the time, but um, it's annoying when it happens. Okay, so we'll go through a bit more details about how to go through all this and what to um, do. So the first thing to, to realize is that you do not need anything special. Everything you need for running WOLF is already installed at NCI and WOLF is already ported at NCI for you. So, um, you know, you don't need to worry about all the software libraries and dependencies and stuff like that. It's already there for you. And you don't and it's free and it's publicly available, although it will probably change with Gadi. Um, more not probably it will change with Gadi. Um, because there is no public access to any project now on Gadi. Uh, but um, anyone will have access or anyone who has will have access to the projects that we need for um, Wolf. Okay, so the first thing to know is where to find information, I think. And WOLF has been around for a long time and it's used a lot, so there is a lot of documentation. Um, this is the main user site for WOLF. Um, I will share the I will share the training, um, but if you're going to use WOLF, bookmark this page. Um, that's really what you want to do. And it looks like this. So it looks a bit old, uh, but who cares? <laughs> Just a look. Um, there is a lot of different information. What's here, you have all the documentation. Uh, that's the user guide, uh, ARW, that you want to use. Um, they have a bit of documentation on the different dynamics and physics scheme. I haven't looked in it in details uh, myself because I don't really care about the science of it. Uh, but yeah, it's there. Uh, if you use, if you open the user guide, I have a web and PDF. Um, you're welcome to have a look through um, the main a portion of it is probably the, the one on WPS, uh, which tells you how to run all the steps uh, to create your uh, input data. And the one on Wolf model. Uh, obviously, they are very long uh, portion of the, of, the, of, of the user guide. And in both uh, portions, there is 
a very interesting thing. It's description of the least variable. So uh, if you're looking for us to know what an option means, or if there is a specific option that's not there and you want to know whether it exists or not, I'll go there and have a look through. It will go, it will give you the name list option. Um, what a typical input looks like and as a description of the option itself. Um, so this way you can see all of them. Okay. Um, and there is also an example of name list options for various uh, applications. So which can be um, uh, useful for a start to have an idea when some options are a bit obscure. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is for um, the main website and user guide. Okay, the documentation on specificities for NCI is here it's in the CMS wiki space. Um, It's, sorry, I forgot to update the link there. I will do it before sharing. So. Um, so if you go to even to the main page, you see you have a wolf section there. Um, give you a bit of an overview. It gives you all the different versions that are still available. Uh, I would advise you to take the latest version when you start. Um, and it gives you a bit of a, it tells you where to find the code and how to build. Although I only put the how to build section in when it changes. So it says to you the same as WOF 3.9 and gives you an, and gives you a link to it. So you can see how to build it there. Um, you just replace 3.9 by 4.1.1 if it ever happens, but yeah. So this tells you how to build. And it's important you read that because the way you build it at NCI is different from the way you will find online, uh, simply because I've created a script to make it a bit more uh, user-friendly for the compilation. Um, so go to the CMS wiki to find out how to compile the code. Uh, Okay, and um, also the, sorry, the, maybe I should use the pointer. Uh, the, the, in the documentation on, on our wiki, you will also find how to uh, create Monday conditions from RNT and data set um, at NCI directly rather than, uh, because it's used a lot, we've created a small uh, utility that helps you to create your uh, boundary conditions and in initial conditions for me and Terry. Uh, but yeah. Um, okay, so here's just how to get started. As I said, go to CCMS Wiki to install and compile the code because that's the bit that's different. After, go through the WOLF tutorial, because it goes into lots of details about all the different steps to create the initial condition, binary conditions, etc. So these are, is it, it's a very well done tutorial. It has been honed by your car for years. So it's really, really you could. Uh, and we have the data for the January 2000 tutorial case on Regin. Um, not that this space will have to change for Gadi. I don't have the name of the new space to give you. Um, I will send an email to um, all of the center once um, it changes 
and I will change the information on the wiki. Um, but yeah, uh, we will have, we will still have the January 2000 tutorial case on Kevin. And to find the tutorial, you can either follow this link or from the, uh, you can, yeah. in the doc, in the main um, wolf user page, doc and pub, you have the wolf online tutorial, which is there. Um, so you can find it like that. Okay, and when you start, it looks like there's a lot there. It's a very long tutorial. So um, what I want to say is do not follow the information there in compilation. That will not work on uh, GADI or NCI. Just and um, you can go through the basics. Um, when I say we have the data for one case, is like the default case here. Um, you know, you go to the case studies, and the default January 2000 case is the one we have the data. If you want to do another one, you would have to uh, download the data. It's usually pretty small for the tutorial. So just download the data, and then you can. Um, you can go through it. Um, so, but I would advise to do the January 2000 case first, and then you follow the information there, and it will tell you everything how to do it. Um, and even if you're going to use a rain team and you have a use, nice utility done for you that will um, abstract a lot of the um, different. Um, how you call it, of the different steps you have to do, I would advise you to know what the different steps are and what they do, because in case there is a problem, you need to know, um, you need to be able to, to, to think about what might cause the problem. Any questions so far? Okay, so now you've done your first, you've, you've got the code, it's compiled, and you've gone through the tutorial to get a better idea of what's going on. And now you want to do your own real case. Um, so how to set up your own experiment is typically about the same steps as the tutorial, uh, but there are a few things you need to decide. Um, first, you need to create your grid. So the most important part, create your grid. Um, once you've created your grid, WPS has some tools to help you visual, visualize your grid and make sure it looks like what you want. And also, as a grid is stored in a file called geo underscore em uh, dot domain, the variables map fact whatever are important. That so typically a good grid will have this map map fact is for map factors. We'll have map factors of about one everywhere. And a bad grid there will be like either very small or very large or a mix of both, you know. Uh, and it's typically says that you if it's one about everywhere, that means your your grid cells are what about the same shape everywhere and same size kind of thing. Um, obviously, you can't have it. Obviously, the, the, the Earth is a sphere, so you can't have it one everywhere, but not too far from one. Um, it's better. And uh, remember that because it's a regional model with projected grid, that means you need to choose a projection for your grid uh, on the sphere. And depending on the region where you Ah, you you need to use a different projection. Not all projections projections are good everywhere. For example, you're not going to use a polar projections if you had the equator. That's pretty obvious this one, but I'm just um, to remember. You need to def to decide which geographical data to use. Uh, as I told you, Wolf give you some but there are different resolutions and different sources. So uh, make sure you, 
you know which, what you are going to use. And then there's the question of the meteorological data, uh, which probably comes with setting up your experiment scientifically. So um, if you can have this data in grip, that's better. If you can't, uh, try to find someone who has already used it for WOLF and has already uh, made the effort of creating uh, intermediate files. And if the, these two options are not possible, then uh, you will have to do some work. Uh, but yeah. I want to stress out that some people for Codex have created uh, intermediate files from CMIP5 outputs, which are in the CDF, and they have information on how they did it. So it can be a useful source of information if you need to at some point. Um, I don't present it here because that's an add-on, but if you need it, keep it, keep it in mind um, and contact us if you, if you would like it. Um, and then there's a big warning about the dynamic and physics options for WOLF. WOLF comes with a lot of options and a lot of people hate WOLF because they say people just plug in whatever number and don't realize that uh, the two schemes they're using are not compatible with each other and is creating like wrong science. Um, so just be aware of creating your own mix. Uh, try to find someone or some information or whatever you, you can um, to decide what to put there. Uh, as I said, WOLF is relatively well used around the center, so there are people there who have used it, uh, not just me, but also scientists, so we can decide a bit more on the science of things, science side of things. Okay, so for um, how to handle the meteorological data, as I said, for every team, we have a small utility. Um, it's called a WPS error. Uh, you give it a nameless WPS file, and it will run all the step of WPS. It will create the grid, um, create the geographical data, create the meteorological data, put them all together uh, with MetGrid and create your MetAM files, which are the output of the WPS. So, um, yeah, you just need the name list that the WPS file and then you're done. Uh, And as I said, the CMIP5 data, some of them have been used in WOLF simulations. And this page has, um, it doesn't give you the data, but it tells you how um, it was uh, done. So you can follow uh, the same approach. Um, and here they took the approach of reformatting the data to GRIB. Uh, you don't necessarily need to do that for NetCDF if you have input as NetCDF, but um, might be easier because um, some tools can easily um, transform data from NetCDF to GRIB. So. Okay. okay. And as I said, we really try to get your that are in grip, in grip format if you can. Uh, okay, so this is about the only thing about one simulation uh, for now. Do you have any questions? Okay. Can I ask a um, dumb question, Claire? Yeah. Uh, just, <laughs> I, I don't know anything about a grip. Uh, why uh, the grip is preferred than the CDF? Oh, uh, it just, I don't, it's just that for some reason the weather forecaster uh, preferred grip. I think it, grip was around before the CDF, 
So they never really moved to NetCDF afterwards. And um, it might be easier for um, point data, I think. What do you think, Paula? Um, Grib is more efficient. Um, NetCDF maybe just recently with the compressed format it's managed to to get the same performance. And I think also it's kind of easier to concatenate the files because it's just structured in a particular way in which every record is completely separated from the others. And even just historically, they have all the code for meteorological data, which were developed for GRIB, so it would have been a massive change for them. I see. Thanks. But it is to note that initially, like a long time ago, the predecessor of WOLF uh, was using GRIB as input and, as, and output, uh, but now WOLF has changed to have inputs. I mean, the, to, uh, the input to WOLF itself is NetCDF, and the output is NetCDF. Uh, it's simply that the they expect meteorological data to be in GRIB uh, still. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so this is tells you how to do one simulation, but usually you want to do more than one simulation, um, and there is not one tool to help set up a set of simulations because I found out that people are doing a lot of different things with WOLF. I have people doing very, very high resolution and very short period of time and lots of sensitivity at, at it experiments, or you have people doing very, very long uh, climate simulations at not so high resolution, and what they want is handling of the restarts and stuff, whereas the other ones want handling of different sets of physics of, or dynamics option, um, and don't care at all about restarts or things like that. So it's, um, and you have also a lot of people using a realized uh, simulation around the center, so. Um, there's a lot of different usage here, which is difficult to um, cater for with one specific tool. Um, although Jeremy Silver was at the center, center the code he wrote for his own experiment. Um, it is set up for one specific setup of experimental case, um, which is described there, and I'll look in detail, but the way, why I'm talking about it is I found the code relatively well written, so it might be useful for others to pick up some parts of it and do their own code from it or, or not. What he wanted to do was relatively short simulations with a spin-up period and then a run period and do that like, you know, in start to spin up at different times. Um, and he wanted all of this to run uh, all at the same time on the machine because it could. Um, which is obviously, and so the ESCOT doesn't handle at all, at all restarts, for example. It's just like, it's just what each run is one simulation, one job on the, on the machine. It's so short. Um, so his code is on GitHub. Uh, you can have a look uh, if it looks if this setup looks at all like what you want to and it might be useful uh, for you if not maybe a bit of uh, bits of bits of it might be useful um, otherwise just uh, you may have to run your to write your own um, I do have some I have written some codes for the long um, climate simulations these are a bit, the ones I'm using for WOLF are a bit outdated, and I have some other ones that I updated for, um, not WOLF itself, but it's called New WOLF. Uh, but I haven't tested those with WOLF only for ages, so I can't ensure that they are working with just WOLF only. Um, so that's why I'm not putting them there. Um, but yeah, don't hesitate to ask for help if you want for setting up your simulations, especially if you have a lot to do, um, you know, different cases or 
we, we can probably help uh, with that as well. Okay, and so that's the end of the presentation here. Uh, is there any question? No? Okay. So what I wanted to do in the time that's left is um, look at uh, how you get the card and how you compile the card and uh, how you do all that because that's a bit that's um, not in the tutorial of Wolf. Okay. So, as I said, we have a GitHub repository for uh, Wolf. COE CMS is the CMS um, organization on GitHub. So we put the codes that we develop in the um, COE means Center of Excellence and CMS. Um, so the Wolf code is there. Um, one particular particularity is that I bundled together Wolf and WPS, whereas you can um, distribute those separately. The reason I don't, I've done that is because WPS is not uh, updated every time Wolf is updated, but you need both versions to be compatible together. So I found it a lot easier for users to just get both together and make so they're sure that they're using things that are compatible together rather than using an old WPS version and then realizing that it doesn't work with the raw version there. Um, okay, and also uh, for w, you can only compile WPS once you have compiled WOF because it's using some file in WOF. So having them both together there. Uh, it was easier to handle the WPS compilation because I knew where the wolf code would be by default. Okay, so you have the GitHub repo. Um, the readme normally tell you how to install all this. Um, yeah. So uh, you can, you're welcome to just clone the repository as usual if you are used to it. As a little quick is I put one branch per version, per version of Wolf. So if you want a specific version, you can directly clone this branch as your uh, master branch. And then you, once you clone the, the, once the code is cloned, it will just be the version that you want and you won't have to change branch or anything like that. So um, I would advise to choose your version there. Um, okay, so I have cloned the code um, just there, and I think I didn't put the branch, so um, it's going to be, yeah, I did. Um, that's one. Okay, so once you've cloned the, the code, I'm all there's UPP in there. It was a request from some people who wanted to use it. It's an extra um, tool that is developed by, I forgot who, who works with Wolf Output. Uh, don't ask me what it does. I don't know. Um, I just put it there because, again, it needs Wolf compilation to work. Um, you're welcome to look at what it does and whether you want to use it or not. Um, we do not test it. A beyond make sure it compiles. So I can't tell you how to use it. Um, yeah. Okay, so once you've um, have Wolf on your uh, space, um, you need to go in the Wolf v3. I know we are at v4, uh, just doesn't matter if it was the name of the directory. Okay, and that's what ends is in the main uh, Wolf directory. Um, and there is a run compile file that's um, only here at NCI. And you can check the option of the file uh, with a simple dash H for help. Ah, I need a bigger screen. 
Okay, and you can see it has quite a lot of things there. Um, let's go with the easy ones first, as is dash C for clean, so it will clean all your compilation completely and uh, we compile from scratch um, if you need to. Important one is compile case. Um, so the way the compilation works is that you, you, so as I said, Wolf can be used for real simulation or idealized, idealized simulation and you don't do the same co compilation depending which simulation you want to use. So compile case is how you specify which simulation you want to run afterwards. Uh, by default, this is set up to be the real simulation here and real. Um, if you want an idealized case, you can specify it with, like, through it. So there, when you put the, the name, uh, you will find the names to put either in the user guide or the tutorial about idealized simulation. Um, you can add chemistry. I don't see anyone interested in the center about chemistry, but it's possible to build it in. Uh, don't build it in if you don't use it, because uh, although if you don't use it, it might not uh, reduce the performance, but yeah. Do not worry about those. Um, unless you really have a, a, an issue, um, do not worry about those. There are two options to add some debugging information and uh, so if you're, again, if these have to be used only if you have an issue, um, a crash or hanging or something like that, uh, but those are here. Okay, um, so after the nest, oh yeah, I didn't talk about the nest in the presentation, I'm sorry. Um, so Wolf not only is a regional model, but you can create ne nested uh, domain in your main domain, so you can have a big domain at a resolution and then smaller domains are higher resolution inside and they can have several domain nested into each other. Um, and the way these different domains on nest uh, communicate with each other can be uh, defined. Um, Oh no, and, and the way the nest is can be defined. So wolf is also used for following hurricanes. And when you follow a hurricane, you want a high res with high res nest that pretty much follow your hurricane. Uh, and that's why here as is to uh, give you options, diff different options of having a moving nest within your domain. Um, I'm guessing no one is going to use hurricanes or might probably no one will need to have a moving nest. So leaving this option at one is is fine. Um, probably, but it's just to let you know it's there. And uh, because you can have this moving nest, that is why in the wolf output you have a time dimension for every single variable, including latitude and longitude, uh, because they can change if you have a moving nest. Okay, so the main option is probably the architecture. Uh, so this is there because the NTR machine is not uh, as uh, processors of different types. And so depending on which processor you are going to use, you might want to compile differently in order to make sure you use the best options for uh, your processor. So there are four, currently there are four different options on Gadi. There will be, I don't know how many, uh, but different ones. Uh, because currently on Ragin there's the Sandy Bridge nodes, which are the most common, Broadwall and Knights Landing processors. And so there's, there's an option for optimization for Sandy Bridge, one for Broadwell and one for Knights Landing. And then there is an added um, choice which gives you the best precision, but 
it means it's the slowest run uh, because it has less optimization for speed. So depending on what you want, <laughs> whatever you want. And for each of those options, you can you have four different ways to uh, compile Wolf. You can compile Wolf serially, so there is no parallelization. Everything runs on one processor. I don't think you need that unless you're running idealized uh, simulation. For real simulation, do not use that. You have shared memory parallelization only. Um, for those we know, it will use only OpenMP. Uh, again, very unlikely you need that only. Okay, so give us the last one. It uses distributed memory parallelization. Um, that means it's using OpenMPI, which definitely you would want when you want a real simulation. And there is one way you can have shared and distributed memory parallelization. So OpenMP and OpenMPI are both uh, there. Uh, one might think that having both type of parallelization is always better. It is not the case. Uh, you can have cases where you turn on OpenMP and your speed goes like really terrible like, uh, compared to only uh, OpenMPI. So if you're going to run a, a very big simulation compiling with this, might be a good, op a good option, even if at the end you don't use the shared memory parallelization because that's, uh, you don't have to use it. Um, but um, yeah, just you will have to do tests to know whether it's useful to use OpenMP or not. Um, okay, and so that's why after for all the different type of processor, you have four different options. Um, and the default is 15, which is uh, this one. So it has, it's not optimized for a certain type of processor, and it's only um, distributed memory parallelization. So uh, as a test, you can leave it like that. Do not worry about it. Once you're doing uh, more intensive work, uh, that's where you have to be careful at what you're choosing there. Any questions? So the way to run it is you typically run, run compile, and then um, let's say I want to run it on um, Broadwell nodes and um, I want broadwell broadwell processor, so it's something between in the 60, and I want a shared memory and distributed memory, so it's 67. So if I put this, it will just run for broadwell nodes, nodes for um, shared memory, and if I then put something like this, it will still run on broadwell nodes, but with no optimization and um, and some checks uh, for uh, for debugging. So this is only useful when um, debugging. So if I do that, it starts writing to me a lot of stuff. Don't worry about it. It's not asking you anything. Um, that's the part where Wolf is configuring all the files for what you're asking it to do. And at the end, uh, it's not finished. I've added this little message. Um, the compilation itself is sent to the queue because it's way too long to be on the login nodes. Um, it can take f about 40 minutes to finish. It can be slow, uh, shorter, but I'll give you an idea. Um, so yeah, so here it just started. Uh, you can check here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, this one. It has been sent to the queue for you, and it's waiting, and it's on Express BW, so it it will be compiled on what well nodes um, for you. Uh, 
Um, the last thing that I didn't talk about because it's handled for you, but um, it will not use at all anything you have in your own environment. Uh, it is using uh, the, same the same environment for everyone. Um, at the start of the compilation and the configuration and everything, it will load this build.env file. And if you look into it, uh, it does a modu module purge, so it's purging everything you have loaded. And it's loading a, a defined set of modules. Everyone has the same. Um, this way, if you, have a, if you have a problem and I need to run your, your code, I'm sure of which environment you're running. And uh, I'm sure that's an environment that will work. So that's why it was done this way, because at the start it was not this way. And each time someone had an issue, I was always like, oh, crap. what are you using? <laughs> OK. Any questions? OK. so. As I said at the start, I wasn't sure whether we're going to have one hour or two hours. What we can do in the second hour is try to go through the um, Wolf tutorial, the 2000 case. I've done this before, and I found it didn't work that well uh, remotely because everyone goes at their own speed, and it was very hard to manage and make sure people um, get enough out of it. Uh, but if you if you want to try, I'm happy to try. Um, and if you want to try, you need to come with a laptop and Wolf install and compile already, because as I said, if 40 minutes of compilation, we can't do it during the training. So, uh, yeah. so uh, you can let me know now or later as you prefer. But if you already know what you want. Nothing? OK. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wait for to see what we do next week or not. Uh, yeah. OK, any comments, questions? Okay, so I'll I'll um, correct the links in the presentations as we're uh, sending you, you to the wrong uh, wiki, wiki, and then I'll send the presentation um, to everyone so you can uh, access it and have all the links there. And then, thank you. Just before and you go, uh, just yeah. before you go, Claire. Um, just to confirm, are you going to next week actually run a simulation? Is that the idea? So the idea would be either I could do it and show you, or uh, everyone could try their own. I have tried the, the format where everyone tries their own. Uh, if you find it useful of just me running it through, running through it, then I could do it this way. Um, it's just whichever. I think just, just in the interest of being able to go back and look at the video, just having you sit down and, and work through it step by step to fire off a simulation from start to finish, I think that would probably be most useful for me. I don't know what other people think. Sure. I can do that. But you can do oh. that next week. Yeah, I can do that next week. There's no problem. OK. So, um. I think that set of it. I saw some nodding of the head that people would be interested in that, so probably do it. Yeah, do you want to say something? She, she wanted week. to say she was yeah. nodding and she would, she would, she, yeah. she thought it was very interesting that I would go through a simulation. So, <laughs> uh, no, the thing is that um, a lot of the tutorials are really helpful because when you're actually doing that, if we have that step by step thing and we can go back to the video and then we can actually check that is more useful. Like sometimes when you're in the tutorial, something doesn't work and you can actually go back. That's a lot useful. Sure. Okay. As well. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's it. I'll, 
I went through it. Um, I think Paul, I have to say something. No, no, no. I was just pointing out that you nodded. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because she was saying, I saw someone nodding, I was confirming. Okay. So, okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, the Thank video you, will be soon on the web. I'm sorry, I really didn't have time to record beforehand to make it more bite-sized bite uh, type, but uh, yeah. I hope you'll find it useful anyway. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks, Claire.